all of these pieces that have been delineated with these seams have been broken up into different chunks and every one of these pieces will have two points that are blue so you can see right here these two points are blue and these are called pins you can see pin unpin Oop. and what happens is when you drag points around the mesh will kind of follow it along and if I pull on another one you can do this kind of elastic thing here which is very neat but it will not stay like that until you mark it as a pin see if I'm not going to do anything and then when I touch this it snaps back so uh, first I'm going to make sure that this is something I even have to be concerned about yep that's the paper so I'm not concerned about that the paper won't even be brought into ZBrush so I'll just take these guys and move them out of the way whoa something happened here I glitched out I think there's a focus tool here frame selection okay this thing is completely hosed this does happen once in a while and it is important to save frequently because it is glitchy okay I closed silo and restarted it reloaded my scene uh, everything was still there it's just that uh, you will need to save frequently when you're dealing with UVs because it does tend to glitch out so I'm going to highlight these pins for the papers that I don't need oh it looks like we got live unwrapping is turned off that that rubber band effect that you saw happening is the live un unwrapping and I had it turned off so I'll turn that back on and now I'll just move these off to the side here okay here's a pin here's another pin sometimes you'll see that the pins get all layered on top of each other so I'm just basically going to take all these pieces and spread them out and I'll worry about the uh, actual flow later. Now this is interesting, it looks like the two pins are right next to each other. Seems like there's another pin there because the rest of the piece is still anchored somewhere. I've never seen that before. Usually it's only two pins assigned for every part. Let's find the pins here. Here's one. And here's the other. you gotta admit that's pretty cool so here's a pin and where's the other pin oh it's over here so the two pins are at the wrist you can see it's kinda got a almost like a dynamics thing going on when the two pins are on one side and you got a bulk of the object over there but that's alright we'll reassign the pins later I'm just gonna start everything out by separating all these pieces doesn't matter if they're inside the UV square or not okay here's that pin it's a mess 
I think this is a good time. You've seen enough. I'm going to... Here's a pin. <laughs> I'll stop the video here and uh, bring it back when I've got all these pieces separated. Okay, here I have all of the little sections separated and spaced out. And uh, my next step will be to apply a texture on here. Just a simple uh, grid color pattern so I can see how the uh, different pieces relate to each other size-wise. That would be over here in the material editor. I think my keyboard shortcut for moving this thing around is also doing an operation. Yep. Oh well. In the material editor, I'm going to load my texture. And uh, you can only use JPEG. I tried different formats like Targa and stuff like that, and it crashed the program. So here is the object with the texture put on the UV map. You can show it, see it shows the image right in here. But not all of the pieces are the same size. So now I will um, grab these guys and just kind of adjust them, get them all on the same relative size. And uh, I'll see you after the edit. Okay, you can see that by highlighting, or rather selecting the two pins and then dragging the axis around, I am affecting the UV map here. And also to adjust the size, just click on the scale tool and I can adjust it that way. Okay, I have all the pieces are essentially the same size, except for this back part, which I don't care about. And the only task remaining, well, one of the last few tasks remaining, is to just make sure that uh, everybody is nicely, cleanly unwrapped, and I suspect the nose has issues. You can see if I click on something, I need to hold down the Alt key, click on the next window, and the selection carries over. Otherwise, you can click on here, click on there, you lose your selections. But it's been established by now that this is the nose. So we can rotate this around upright just for the heck of it. And as you can see, it's a little bit uh, skewed over to one side, but that's okay. That's what these pins are great for. I have my keyboard shortcut reassigned to the period button to change the pin assignments. And I'm going to select these central points here. Oh. Gotta deselect that one. Okay. No, now this one's selected. There we go. Now you can see it kind of almost straightens itself out by having the two centers selected. Now I will select this guy. So you can see this is blue now. And I can adjust this thing going here. And select these two as pins and just kind of pull that out. There. That's pretty good. Yeah. Looking a lot better there.